The impact of COVID, not only on the individuals, but the communities and the country, actually put a spotlight on mental health well-being because we had uh, people who struggled with the change from working in the office to starting to work at home. And we also had people that were in isolation for weeks. So I think COVID pushed it more in towards the spotlight. The Australian government has funded majority of Empower Pacific's projects and you know that has enabled us to continue the work that we do. Well, our counsellors are general counsellors so they are able to address a variety of issues. They provide support for the hospital patients and their families whether it's coping with a major illness, providing support for grief and loss whether it's for a mother who's just lost a child or for family who's just lost a family member that's in the hospital. To prevent the hospital from becoming ground zero for a wider outbreak, the members of our disciplined forces have locked down Lotoka Hospital in a matter of hours. The Lautoka Hospital remains in lockdown with 400 patients and staff quarantined inside. The death of a patient and the infection of two doctors and a nurse have sent ripples of anxiety through the wider community. We were finishing our work as normal as possible on that particular day when we were going out with our bags and we were told, no, you cannot leave. The anxiety was so high because all of a sudden when we had a look outside, there were police officers, there were military out there. Whoever was there was supposed to just remain, stay put. We returned to our office and now we are also afraid maybe we have crossed somebody that was COVID positive because it was very novel, like very new to us at that particular time. I was in head office. We looked at uh, getting in touch with their families, ensuring that they got the, um, the supplies that they needed in terms of their clothes and things like that. Uh, we provided them with uh, food packs because uh, we were not really sure about the food situation in the hospital because normally they would always have enough for the patients, you know, and then, but apart from the patients, there was a lot of hospital staff and then other people as well that were caught in the hospital. So within the few days, uh, there was nothing. We were just in our rooms eating and sleeping and we were still processing what was actually happening and what could happen. Towards the end of one week into lockdown, there was a need uh, for counselling support to most of the patients and uh, to some of the staff. When we were uh, told that there is a need of our service, we got quite anxious because an outbreak is such a thing we are not able to see the threats out there. We had concerns that the staff might get in, infected. Uh, we were worried about their mental health and emotional well-being, but at the same time, we can't say no. We don't turn people away. So when I had my first session into one of the wards during this COVID uh, lockdown, I was a bit anxious, but I had to be very mindful of taking my worries and stress apart in order to help the patients because that was priority there. To my surprise, towards the end of the session, I realized I had a pretty good session with my client. So that motivated me, yes, I can do it and I can provide these services despite my own fears and anxiety. There was a lady, she was a non-COVID patient who became my client. She was quite elderly, she was told on the day of lockdown that she was supposed to be going home. She did not understand what was happening. She was one of my everyday patients that I used to go and visit during my lockdown. Unfortunately, she passed away. She is somebody that is going to be in my mind despite providing all that support and assurance and then passing away in a lockdown from non-COVID. That is something very difficult to digest and get over with. Sometimes it's very hard to get those clients off the mind. Yes. But I use the support of my pets, which I love, just to spend that time with them so that I can feel okay. And then I have spent some quality time with my boys as well. 
The impact of COVID was something that nobody expected here in Fiji. In 2020, we initiated our 24-7 counselling helpline, which actually widened our scope. The highlights for me is when I start talking to the person that is stressed or worried, at the end of the conversation, he or she is able to smile with me. Like, you know, they do feel that satisfaction, okay, they feel they have offloaded the stress just by me providing that space so that they can talk openly about whatever is affecting them emotionally.